people ready? Everybody ready? Say amen. amen. Everybody ready? Know they're going to heaven. Say amen again. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Brother, we, we need to do that again. All right. So we can get it on, on the uh, uh, video. Everybody that's ready and know they're going to heaven, say amen again. Amen. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you and on this Lord's Day, the second Lord's Day of this new year. And I hope that your new year has come in. And as we said in the transmittal uh, that was sent to you for uh, the, the worksheet, that the new year found the new you. Somebody said amen. amen. I don't mean a Weight Watcher type new. I'm talking about a new you.
good saying amen. amen. Let us bow. First, let us do our scripture for this morning. Isaiah, the second chapter, and verse 2. Shall we together? And it shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above all hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. A early, early prophecy of the church of God. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah. You may be seated. Amen. Let's bow together in prayer. Thank you, Lord. And your tender mercy, which is grace, but it is through grace that we can receive by faith the salvation that only you through your son can give. And that alone is enough for me to shout, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for putting it upon our heart to come together and worship not forsaking ourselves for the gathering of together in your house. Thank you that we are able, Lord God Almighty, of our own reconnaissance to move, to do, to hear, to be, and have our dwell. Oh, Lord, thank you. Now, Lord, as we go into your... Go in, as we enter the worship, allow us that you would be, we enter your throne room and that you and all of heaven would receive our praise and our worship in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The saving name of Jesus. And all of God's children said amen. God bless you this morning, my brothers and sisters, and we are happy to see each of you. And so we are going to our, our to announcement. And first, I want to make you aware that on next Sunday, Brother Kevin and, and Kate Barnett, but Kate Far Barnett, amen, amen, our missionaries, We'll be back here. Amen. Amen. I got an email Amen. from them early on last week, and they stated that the Lord be their helper. They should be at mom and dad sometime earlier, well, this coming week. And uh, they would like to share with us their mission. Isn't that all right? That's all right. Real live missionaries that have been all the way around the world. Amen. Somebody will help me here. And the great experiences that they've had, I told them, yes, we welcome you for you to come and and just present to us what God has done through your ministry. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. And so they'll be here next Sunday and make their presentation uh, to us on next Sunday. Uh, now, on MLK. Several things here. First of all, there is the there's the march, 9:30 on the 17th, meeting at Proctor Chapel, but it will not have the same root as was done earlier. Um, another organization that is going to be conducting the march. All right, but be at Proctor Chapel at 9:30 on on Monday the 17th. Then that night. And out there, as you came in, there were there's a sheet that gave you the coordinates. That's next Monday night on the 17th at 7 p.m., the Ministers' Union will have their annual MLK program by Zoom. By Zoom. 
and I have offered them uh, my dollars Zoom account in order to have it. That's why I was on, on that handout. It'll say my dollars is presenting. Actually, the my present ministry union that we call it, it is a uh, our church account. Wherever you are, by by uh, laptop, by tablet, or by phone, you can access the, uh, the worship service. All right. So coordinates are out. If you don't have a copy, then uh, well, we'll see to it that you get a copy. Now, the uh, he. County Coalition uh, group a order blank and it has to be done today. They are sponsoring people at the Mount Pleasant Ministry. It has to be done today and it has to be paid for today. Somebody said amen. amen. And they even got a, a, a category over here for either cash or cash app. <laughs> Isn't that all right? Now, if you want one, you need to put it down and uh, turn the money in today. The, the prices are down here. You can get that out. But we do have a price list that was delivered just this morning. And uh, certainly we want everyone, anyone who wants one to get one. Amen? All right. Our six. Sonia Bryson had met with uh, another situation. It kind of was a little bit of turnaround of events. So she goes back tomorrow. Is that right, Sister Teresa? Okay. All right. A text that I got indicated that the following Monday. But anyway, she, her, her uh, surgery, so to speak, was, was postponed or changed, shall we say. And God is still good. And as I told her daughter, that tell her that God has a plan. Amen. Don't worry about the when and the where. God has a plan. So she will be going again uh, pretty soon. And we just know that whenever God is ready, he will be taken care of. And he's going to restore us. Amen. We're going to restore us. Amen. Now, I know we've gone through back and forth, but tomorrow in the MOBC chapel, that's our old, that's the name we've given the, the original sanctuary, a, we will have a family service for Vanessa Williams, uh, a, funeral, a family funeral service. And then after that, she will be interred at the Old West Cemetery up the street. So in the morning at 11 o'clock in the original sanctuary, the, the uh, chapel, we will have service, funeral service for Sister Vanessa. Let us thank God that God worked it out Amen. and that uh, the family is uh, thankful to the church for offer offering its assistance in the home going of Vanessa. May God bless you and may he keep you. Uh, are there any, any, well, let me say this. I know that throughout the community, we are getting more and more cases. I'm not going through on who, what, or when. But we have several that are related to or part of this church that have succumbed to uh, virus. Let us, we're going to move forward. If you had not gotten your booster, get it. Be careful. And we're going to continue on. Pray for those who are dealing with it, whether they have it or their families are in the hospital, but know the numbers are rising in my present and Titus County. I'm, all right? And uh, sooner or later, I just hope that it, it, as they think it may be, it'll pass on through and uh, we can go on from there. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you.
I want to thank Brother Brother Brand. Brother Brand Amen. took over for the Sunday school this morning Amen. and challenged everybody. Amen. Amen. He even had Brother Carol there all. Right. 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 Brother Green, give him your hand. Does Shotty look like he knows what he's doing over there?
Is it anybody here that hadn't been blessed? Did he charge you anything? Glory to God. Our responsive reading is coming from the book of Isaiah, the prophecy of Isaiah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Amen. Let us stand together. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Amen. Shall we? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door who moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard a voice of the Lord, saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. Amen. Send my neighbor. Send my friend. Send my sister, my brother. Here am I. Send me. With all heads bowed. And all hearts humble. Gracious God, I pray. We just read your prophet statement of his being summoned by you. And the response that he gave. Isaiah said upon him the voice, Here am I. Send me. Oh, it brings to my heart what your son Jesus said concerning the workers that's needed. He said, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth workers. In his vineyard. Father God, in these times, and no different from the days of Isaiah, but in these times, we need some I send me. Send me across the street to my neighbors who don't know you in the pardoning of their sin. Send me to my family. Send me to my co workers in love and in the keeping of God's grace. 
to tell her that the wages of sin, yes, is that. But the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for those who have said, Lord, send me. And may there be more. For the, bit, for the tr harvest truly is plenteous. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we have many that are falling by the wayside. In these times, in these 20 some odd months that we've been enduring the pandemic, we can say that your hand of protection has been upon us and wrapped around us. And Lord, even amidst all of this, may I declare unto you that none has taken away my hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, I dare not trust. May we be able to say that with a conviction. Now, those who have succumbed to this pandemic, to this virus, and that are happening, and, and those that will, Lord, sustain them. Help us, Lord. You provided the, the way. You provided the information. You provided a source. Let us follow you as we go through. And those who are weak, who are weeping and mourning over the loss of a loved one for whatever reason, whether it be by the pet from the virus or some other situation, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, is our prayer. And then bless those that are those first first line providers, Lord. Especially in the hospitals all across this nation. Things have doubled. Hospitals are strained. The workers are tired. Doctors and nurses and all the technicians and everyone. Help us. If it's obedience that we need, help us to have that. If it's a greater understanding, reveal it to us, Lord. But most of all, help us to trust you and follow your direction. Now, Lord, as we gather here this morning, may your Holy Spirit guide us. May your word come forth because none of this belongs to us. It's all about you. You own us. This is your place. We are your servants. Speak to us what you would have us to know. And we give you glory. <laughs> and we give you power. And we give you honor. And we give you praise. And we give you ourselves. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless your word everywhere. And all of God's children said amen. Green? Yeah. Every hand. Yeah. But you know what? I tell you. Yeah. Can't you glean off of that? Can't you glean off of that? I feel like I'm going to go on. Going on. My Lord. Glory to his name. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Green. The hymn of the morning, my brothers and sisters. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Is there anybody here? Yes, yes. 
people said amen. Amen. Number two. Audio prompted me up there. All right. That's, that's good. Because he first loved Now who could it? Because he first. That's enough by itself. Because he first. And you know he is the first of everything. He is the first cause. Everything else happened after that. He is the first Well, my brothers and sisters, it came to me that what we, when you prophets, those of you who listen to the Night Watch presentation, Night Watch, 
will know this that I'm about to embark upon in this talk. What happened was, and I can't get it down, I'm a preacher. The Lord said to me, that was a sample for not like it, but we need to redo, re revisit and do and go a little deeper or a little more encompassing, shall I say. And uh, it's kind of so. I told her, I said, we're going to do change from a textbook type of thing to more of a storytelling about what was happening. Yes, yes, you know, there, there are several forms of uh, the homiletic. Which is most important you hear. But old early earlier prophets and preachers did storytelling. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. Tell the story with implications of your action, the behavior response that the story was requiring. Somebody ought to help me here. So I am Unaware of the fact that there's no way you can cover the book of Isaiah. I don't care if you read it every day. Now that Jesus comes back, it is so profound, so magnificent. I've always, he said, he's always been my favorite. The book of Isaiah, what I want to do is in the next couple of two or three Sundays, I'm not planning on going where you are. You are? All right. Yeah. Then we're going to prove some work. And, and it won't be in depth. It, in depth detail, because each verse by itself, one verse, as we're about to see in a few moments, is enough to spend eons of time on. But we're going to break the book of Isaiah according to the way that the prophets, or rather biblical scholars disagree. But this is the way that I agree. This is the convention I agree, that I agree to. And that is, or I, I subscribe to rather, that the book of Isaiah is in three parts. Amen. The first part is chapter 1 through 39. The second part is chapter 40 through 55. And the third part is chapter 56 through 66. Isn't it ironic that the book of Isaiah has as many chapters as the books of the Bible. I'm not going to charge y'all anything for this, that I'm sure. Also, of all of the Old Testament writers, the book of Isaiah is quoted more times in the New Testament than any other book. The book of Isaiah. And the verse, we just read it, if you want to go through the response of reading. We're going to look at 1 through 39, and you know in 30 minutes, somebody said, no, Reverend Robert, you mean about 40 minutes. <laughs> you at least 40, 45. But in the next few minutes, we're going to take a sampling of these of these chapters. And the purpose of all this is to show is our hope. Because at the time Isaiah wrote, reminds me of these times. There was a lot of gloom. 
a lot of hopelessness, a lot of depending on somebody in the higher up to say the word God to you. You all know what I'm talking about. To do, to be the answer. And so, God sent Isaiah. Now, the 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 powerful. There's a lot. Is the one where he said, give this testimony of when he got saved. That's what he said. <laughs> Go back, flip your page back to the response to read. In the year, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Look at the description. Sitting up on the throne. High and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. He was in the church. <laughs> that's where some of these, that's whatever they're doing, staying at home and whatever. I think that maybe... Brand, I'm going to get in the truck with you. We're going to go and all of them got, got cables. Amen. We're going to go around and tell them we're going to cut the cable off and you won't be able to get. <laughs> Sitting up on the throne. High and lifted up. And his train. There have been those biblical scholars who said that the train of God is not like the train of a lady's red train. Right. 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 glory of God. The glory of God is the fact of his being. Right. He radiates. Yeah. He illuminates. Yeah. 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 Amen. That happens a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But let me lay out back out the book for a moment and go on in and, 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 and tell you about a little bit about Isaiah himself. In the first verse of the first chapter, he tells about when some, it reads, and we are over on the second page, he reads, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amon, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, not Ahaz, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Now, I hasten to tell you that you got to understand. Some say this verse, as it goes over to chapter 6, verse 1, you notice what he says. In the year King Uzziah died. Here he gives us this list of kings. What Isaiah is doing is they didn't have calendars. Some, some, uh, uh, well, he had to identify when it was. They didn't have calendars. The only way they could tie a time frame down 
was to use some, some great event or some permanent person. Anybody living in America during the during the sixties would know about the year that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Am I anywhere? Right. So if I say in 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 the year that King that uh, President Kennedy was assassinated, you'd automatically say, "Well, nineteen sixty-two, Amen, sixty-three in that area, so to speak." Some say that it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't until Uzziah died that he saw the Lord because his idol was Uzziah. I don't, I don't, Uzziah. I don't, I don't, I don't really care about that word. I don't go with that. Now, apparently, based on what we read, Isaiah must have come from a priestly order or been related to the kings or the sons of David. Every king of Judah had to have the lineage or genealogy of David. Am I anywhere? Because Isaiah had access to the king. Not only did he have access to the king, but he was, apparently he was a statesman. And he goes through in his presentation to tell us that he was king, he lived, well let me back up, he lived, he was born and raised in Judah. Now, Judah is Ten tribes on the north is called Israel. So when you read the book of Isaiah, when you hear it referring to Israel, if you're not careful, most of the time it's talking about the ten tribes of the north. There's some time that he'll use the term Israel as the whole country. But un un uh, never, whenever he used the term Judah, he's talking about the two tribes of the south, which covers Jerusalem. Isaiah was born in and around Jerusalem somewhere in the latter part of the 8th century. Somebody ought to help me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And during the time he was born, and during that era, apparently he served as a prophet and as an advisor to the king for some 60, 40, 50 to 60 years because the, 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 the time frame he covers goes all the way from before the Assyrian capture of, of the northern kingdom, Israel, down to the Babylonian capture of Judah. Have I catch what you're saying? Lord, have mercy. But one thing about Isaiah, Isaiah say he refers to God as the Holy One of Israel. Now I'm going back to that text that we, that we, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, what you have here is the testimony of Isaiah about not only his calling, but also his conversion and his commission. Can I get a witness? All of it's in there. And what it comes to tell me is every one of us, if you ever meet the Lord, you ought to have a story. Yeah. Or you will have a story. You have your in the year King died. If you don't have a story, maybe you need to go get another appointment with him. Somebody ought to help me here. Yeah, yeah. And then, look how vivid he is. Look how vivid he is in talking about this. He says, look, 
the first thing he wanted us to know after we talked about the train, he said, these seraphim, these heavenly creatures, said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. <coughs> and Isaiah is setting up this theme that he believes, that God in his holiness took out of, did not remove him from the fact that he would deal with man in his ungodliness. Think about this. Think. Isaiah is saying God is holy. Holy, holy, holy. Normally, he would, something holy wouldn't venture out of his holy character. Because anywhere else would be unholy. But thank God that God reserved a part of him that he could come and deal with the unholy in order to get them to holy. That that alone, when I when I really realized what was going on, because he goes and describes how in the world could God the post of the door moved just by the voice of it. The big, the, think about the temple. It had big columns. I mean, you know, several years ago, Sister Robinson and I went over to, uh, to Asia Minor with Turkey and, and Corinth and, and, and Ephesus. And, and, and what, what intrigued me about the architecture for a lot of those, uh, the Greek and the Roman left their trace off. All through the Middle East. And those massive columns that held those structures up, the Colosseum at Rome, and all, and everywhere they had a place. They, come on, you, you talk about what we did in the church. Good God Almighty. You would see those theaters, and, and the one in Ephesus that we stood in, and I know I'm kind of I'm not getting it, I'm just diverting, but this one. The one in Ephesus that we stood in, you didn't need a microphone. You all remember. All right. The way they had it acoustically designed, you could stand down here and the folks way up there without a microphone could hear what, what you had to say. Can I get a witness? And the, when I see that and think about God and his power, if man can do that, what in the world? The door post, that big just by the voice of God. And you would venture to come out of heaven who knew no sin and cannot stand the presence of sin but let to steal in order to get us where he wants us to be. Oh, he had to reserve himself, a part of himself. Listen, let me tell you something. God went out of his way to save us. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. And let me go. I, I get lost there. Let, let me go on. Let me tell you 1 through 39. 1 through 39. The main. Chapter 5. Chapter 5 of, of, of Isaiah. You'll find in there corruption. And this is where the corruption was. The wealthy against the poor. Can I get a witness? Spiritual leaders and their corruption. Priests and prophets. Politicians. The military. The government. All in all the corruption going on. And if that doesn't look like now, I don't know what does. Corruption everywhere. May I flip over if you're in your Bible? Flip over, or right there in your, in your um, spirit. Look there at verse 8 of chapter 5. Woe unto them. Listen, in chapters 1 through 9, the main thing that characterizes it is God's woes, and a woe 
is a way of calling attention, but it's always got a negative impact on the other end. Right. Are you with me? You know, I can say, hey, now that's a way of getting attention. A uh, whole, oh, that's, but when, when you hear the word, whoa, it means hold up, because something bad, it needs to be told. Right. Y'all didn't hear what I said, did you? Whoa, all through 1 through 39 is nothing but woe. Woe, sin, and judgment. A brief sample of it. Woe, verse 8. Unto them that join houses, house to house, that lay field to field, and there be no place. To, in, 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 in interpreting that, what, what God is saying, he's talking to Israel now, Israel and Judah. What God is saying is, the greed, the rich are so rich, all they want to do was just expand, 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 building house to house, leaving no place for the poor. Can I get a witness? And what? And then, if you were gonna stay anywhere, you had to pay their enormous price. Good God Almighty! God was concerned about those kinds of things that we see every day. Greed always gets God's attention. Somebody ought to hit me here. Yes, greed always gets God's attention. Secondly, it says, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. In other words, this group is not, this, this pleasure seeking group. All they want to do, they go from Friday to Friday. Uh -huh. of their heart is nothing towards God. It's all about me and how to make me feel good. That's right. Does that sound familiar? Woe unto them, verse 11, that rise up early in the morning, uh, uh, well, that continue until night, till the wine in flame. Now, don't get lost in the fact that he's, he's saying wine. Anything that has to do with pleasure and you run after it with 100%, listen, that is an abomination to God. Whoa! Let's skip on down right quick. Let's go on to verse, to verse 31. Verse 31, to the chapter 31. Here, not only did Isaiah see the prophets uh, prophesy the evil uh, uh, against the evil of his countrymen round about it. In that section, 1 through 39, you will hear him giving prophecy. He was an international prophet. Can I get a witness? He didn't just prophesy to, Abe, to I, uh, Israel and, and, and Judah. He prophesied to Assyria. He prophesied to Babylon, Babylon, to Moab, somebody ought to help me here, from to Egypt, and here in verse, in chapter 31 and 1, he's prophesied about what is Egypt, I mean, what to Egypt, about what Judah has done. Listen, he says, woe, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses. In other words, during this time, the country, uh, Hezekiah, was, was, crying, was afraid that the Assyrians was going to overtake them. But rather than go on his knees, he goes and makes a pact with Egypt. Okay. Can I get a witness? Listen, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you one thing. If God is for you, yeah. Haggai and, 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 and Sarah and Ty, are we in there? Right. And Abraham. Ishmael, and Isaac, the same thing. If God is for you, you, you don't have to take matters in your own hand because your hand no good anyway. And God showed them that they didn't need to. Because Assyria did not, was not successful in, a, in 
overcoming or capturing it. Covetedness, as I said. Idolatry. You don't have to have a golden cat. You don't have to have a baby to have an eye. Anything that you devote your time, attention, and your heart's desire to is an eye. You may not buy to it. You don't think. You may not physically do this. But if it's got you, it's an eye. Yeah, yeah. And listen, listen. It may be animated. Or it may be a lie. It may be across town, or it may be right in the house with you. Can I get a witness? God says to Israel, I am the Lord your God. They have, they have no other God before me. Can I get a witness? And sometimes we let our own selves be our eyes. Oh, I'm closing now. Isaiah. Why are you bringing this to us? It's the same problems of the 8th century and the early 7th century can be the same problem we have now. But the answer is the Lord that kept Israel back then, he neither slumbers or sleep right now. Amen. He is able to do all things. Don't you listen at the naysayers. And don't you listen at the politicians. And all, all they're trying to do is preserve themselves. The one who sits high and looks right. low. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah, That's the one I'm counting on. All right. Yeah, you, I, 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 I like that part in that, in that old hymn that, 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 that my hope is built right. on nothing less yeah. than Jesus' blood yeah. and righteousness. Yeah. I dare not touch yeah. the sweetest frame, yeah. but I hold it. Lean on Jesus' name. His oath, his covenant supports me in the wellman's flood. And when I all around, my soul gives way, he then is my hope and stay. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground. All other ground. All other ground. If I didn't believe it, I'd fold this Bible up, throw it across the street over there, and go, and you wouldn't see me in the Lord's house again. Thank you, Isaiah. As, we cl as I close, thank you. Yes, even in those chapters of gloom and doom, so well, do because they were doing wrong. Isaiah put sprinkles of hope. Isaiah two two, the one we just read in our response in our opening, he's really looking far enough down to talk about the church, the mountain of the Lord's house. <laughs> Isaiah seven fourteen. Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, be, meaning God with us. <laughs> there you with that subject again. He's holy, but he's with us. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government... <laughs> We'll get that in the second part. <laughs> Amen. The government will be upon <laughs> He didn't say a thing about any of the other those 46 when God washed it up tonight. He said the government's going to be on his throne. Come on, brother. 
Brother Green. Don't let the woes, just make sure when God gives a woe, a woe, you are not on the other end of it. <laughs> Let's think. of his sacrifice we now can have peace with God so we are justified through his precious blood so if you are here and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior now is the time the, the precious lamb of God. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. If you're willing to trust him as your Savior, he, he will save you. He will give you <coughs> the blessing of salvation. How shall you do it? Ask him into your life. myself to you when we do that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins yeah yeah and then he would come in as it's as John said in Revelation he come in and sup with you behold I stand at the door and not at, at stand at your heart I'm asking, will you accept me as your Savior? God bless you today. I trust that all of you accepted the Lord as your Savior. There's somebody that you can point in this direction toward the Lord. Do so. You may be seated. The Lamb of God. for the land.
We have our sister has come, and I believe she reported to Brother Brand that she come. Is that right, Brother Brand, for prayer? Let her stand. My Lord. Amen. Wait, wait, no, hold up just a moment. Right there where you are. Stand right there where you are. But How many? Countless, Lord. Okay, one more. Yes, ma'am. Brother Brian, if you will, lift it up. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. God 
God bless. And we trust to give all of those that we have heard about that are sick, whether it be COVID or whatever it is, let them know that the church is praying for them. And be careful. Amen. Amen. Now for the benediction. Unto him that's able to keep us. Keep us from falling. We give him glory, honor, yeah. and dominion. Yeah. And all of God's children said, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Woods, I have you. I have this order. If anybody wants T-shirts, it has to be done today. If anybody wants T-shirts, I'm going to pass this list to Sister Robert and Sister Woods. And uh, yes, ma'am.